Yes, sir. So our next presenter, inshallah, as we all know, he is our brother, our imam. He is a resident imam of Masjid Bilal Ibn Rabah in San Antonio, Texas. He is also the convener of the Southwest Section, uh, which is the collection of Masjid in the uh, Southwest region of the United States. Uh, he's a longtime community supporter and leader that have provided excellent guidance throughout the years. And so without further ado, I want to bring on Imam Omar Shakir. Thank you, Imam Elijah. Assalamu alaikum wa Ramadan Mubarak. Always beginning with Allah's name. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ahtuhu la sharika la. Lahu mulk wa lahu hamd. Wa huwa ala kuli shayin qadir. Wa ashadu anna muhammadin abduhu wa rasuluhu. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa lal alihi wa sabbihi ajma'in. Amma ba'd ayyuhal muslimoon. That is, with Allah's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer, we give him the complete and perfect praise. He is our Lord, keeper, sustainer, evolver of all the systems of knowledge. We bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah alone. He is without partners or associates and has nothing like unto him. To him be the dominion or the rule. To him be all unqualified praise and he has power over all things. We further witness that Muhammad, to whom the Quran was revealed, we witness that he is Allah's slave servant and his messenger, and we pray the prayers and the peace be on him, his family, his descendants, the companions, the righteous all. And yes, dear Muslims, I'm extending that peace to you, ayu al muslimun, and all you, on you also be the peace. We say, I mean, wa amabad. My dear brother Elijah, it is always an honor and a pleasure for me to be with you all, the community there at Imam Wadathu Masjid, Imam Wadathu Deen Muhammad. As you mentioned, yes, we have a very long standing relationship and it's easy to support a community such as yours with all the wonderful programming that you give, the quality and excellent programming that you've given over the years and you still maintain that standard. We certainly want to acknowledge Imam Wazir Ali, Imam Dr. Wazir Ali, the resident Imam there. We acknowledge you, Imam Elijah, and your team. I, I know when I start naming people, I'm going to leave someone out, but of course, Imam Ahmed, Imam Farouk. And just we just appreciate everything that you all are doing. We appreciate this opportunity. And we acknowledge all of the presenters before me and those that will come after me, inshallah. And we pray Allah that we offer something that is beneficial today. As we all know that our theme and topic is Ramadan renewal, a season of growth. And I've added an additional piece to this. I hope you don't mind that I've added something to this. But of course, we fully respect your theme, Ramadan renewal, a season for growth. And I've added this, and the Fitra principle. Ramadan a renewal, a season of growth, and the Fitra principle. And I want to begin my presentation today, those of you that have taken notes, and I think when I read this verse, you're going to see what direction I'm taking. I pray Allah you will. I begin with chapter 30. Verse 30 in the Quran, 3030, 30, Surah Al-Rum, seeking refuge with Allah from Satan, the rejected enemy, and with Allah's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer, we say, A'udhu billahi min al-shaytan yirajim, bismillahi rahman rahim Fa'akim wajhaka al-ladini hanifan, fitrata allahi lati fitra nasa alayha. La tabdila le kalki la hi da li ka di nu kaimu. Wala kina aktara nasi la ya la moon. Sadakallah wadim. 
and Allah the mightiest has spoken the truth. I will give you a translation. This is Yusuf Ali. So set thou thy face steadily and truly to the faith. Establish Allah's handiwork according to the pattern on which he has made mankind. No change let there be in the work wrought by Allah. That is the standard religion, but most among the human family or the human beings understand not. Again, Sadaq Allahu Adeem. Now you might think this is a strange place to start. We're talking about Ramadan. We're talking about renewal. But for me, family, this verse really sums it all up. <clears throat> this verse tells us what Allah's intent was. This verse tells us so many things that I'm going to explain in a moment. But, but the point is, if we're going to grow, if we're going to talk about renewal, if we want to talk about being in touch with the will and plan of Almighty God, we have to know what that is, is certainly Allah. The point, though, is Allah has an intelligent plan operating. Allah gives definition. Allah gives order in proportion, as he says in Surah the Ayla. So the point is, I begin like this because when I think of Ramadan, I'll say it now and say it again later, I think about Ramadan being an opportunity for the human being to get back in touch with that original pattern, this is how we define fitra, original nature, original constitution, original pattern. And all of us will bear witness that by the time Ramadan comes in or comes about, we are more than ready to focus and to concentrate and get back into the disciplines that we know are beneficial for our lives. Praise be to Allah. So, Let's look at the verse, but before looking at the verse, look at a definition for renewal. I found this very interesting, and I think it coincides with what I just said. The definition is an instance of resuming an activity or state after an interruption. I'm going to say that again an instance of re re renewing, resuming, I'm sorry, an instance of resuming an activity or state other than or, or after an interruption. So, so, dear family, when you look at this, this is, is I see the uh, fall of Adam, so to speak. I see the fall of Adam, so to speak, as an interruption. In other words, Adam had a, a particular purpose. Uh, Adam had a particular destiny, a, 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 a particular destiny, and that was interrupted when Satan seduced him from his better self, seduced him from his purpose, his constitution, his plan. So it was it was interrupted. It has to be resumed. And the Dean of El Islam is certainly the best opportunity for us to resume that which was interrupted. But again, why did I say the verse? Why did I say this verse sums it all up for us? This verse implies so many different things. First of all, it tells us that we've been blessed with a religion that is compatible with the universe. We have been blessed with a religion that is in, in accordance with Allah's handiwork. And Allah's handiwork, again, gives definition and purpose to everything it creates. It gives it its nature, etc. So now we have, we, we, most people don't argue with nature. They, they, they see that there's nothing wrong with nature, that nature is perfect. Nature is what it is. So we too have a nature and we have an original pattern that is compatible with whatever Allah did. When he put the sun in the, in the sky, the moon in the sky, the stars, all of the animals he created, the trees, the plants, everything that he created is sound and it has a nature. And this religion is really not something that we have to become. This is a religion that we have to return to. This is a religion that is compatible with our nature. Praise be to Allah. So it sums it all up. 
Allah tells you that you don't want to change this. Why don't we want to change it? Because if you change the pattern, if you change the nature, then you are going to create disease and harm, death and chaos. And we see that throughout the earth. So this religion also is Hanifan. Hanifan. You've heard this term before. This term is throughout the Quran, and usually it is equated with Father Ibrahim, alayhi salam. And I have to give a shout out, in a, in a sense, to our dear Imam, Qasim Ahmed, radiallahu anhu. We miss you, Imam Ahmed. I want to give you a shout out here because you shared with us many times this definition of Hanifa. And you shared with us the time that you asked Imam Muhammad radiallahu anhu, what is the difference between Qiyam and Hanifa? Because both of them suggest standing or uprightness, being upright, standing upright. So he asked, what is the difference? And when the Imam, Waratuddin Muhammad radiallahu anhu responded, he said, the Hanif nature or Hanif is that natural urge, is that natural disposition, is that natural inclination. I'm embellishing a little bit. He just simply said the natural urge, but I want it to be clear for us. It is that natural urge in us to be upright. We're not sinners by nature. We don't, uh, uh, we don't lean towards corruption and filth. We're decent by nature, upright by nature. So we have a natural urge. And isn't that what I said? Fitra, I'm tying all this in. Fitra, fatra, all of that, the natural urge, the natural constitution, the natural disposition, the natural constitution. So we have the natural urge. And then just to complete what Imam Muhammad told him, the Hanif is the natural urge in a human being to be upright. And the Qiyam, that standing, is the establishment of of that uprightness. I'm going to leave that right there. Praise be to Allah. So, everything has a fitra pattern. Again, fitra, original pattern, original nature, original constitution, a destiny, a purpose. So what is the fitra pattern for the human being? You all are already ahead of me because you're students of the imam as I am. Imam Waratuddin Muhammad, radiallahu anhu. We get our cues from the story of Adam, alayhi salam. Our father, our first father, that creation story, the creation story of Father Adam, upon him be peace. This is what helps us understand and define for us what is fitra for the human being. So then what we have to look at what does Adam represent for us since he is the being or since he is the, the type or since he is the represented, representative or the sign of what fitra is for us? What are some of the things that Adam represent? Again, review. He represents the original human type and the intellect of the human being. Now, I just, I'm just going to say a couple of things, again, taking nothing for granted. Most of us are familiar with this information, but there may be someone that's not. Adam, upon him be peace, in his original creation, regardless to what other faiths have said, that's one of the reasons why Al-Islam had to come to correct this, this image or this the character of Adam, upon him be peace, because some of us have an idea about him that he, we, he is the reason for all of our problems in the world, that, that he was weak and that he was sinful. He's a sinner by nature and all of that. So El Islam comes to set the record straight. El Islam comes to correct all of this. So the original human type is innocent. The original human type is pure. And Adam was such until Satan seduced him from that pattern and from that state of being. Did you hear the word? I said seduced. 
Seduction means the wall has kind of been put over your eyes. Seduction means maybe I've appealed to your appetites with bypassed your intelligence. Seduction means that in a sense that I wasn't necessarily a willing participant. You tricked me. You made me forget myself. And then I became vulnerable and I became prey for your scheme and your plan. And that's what happened to the human family. But in his original constitution, he was excellent. Why do we think Allah told the angels who are perfectly obedient, who serve Allah perfectly? Why do we think Allah told the angels to bow to him? Why do we think Allah told the jinn to bow to him? Because he was making something in the earth that was worthy of that type of acknowledgement and recognition. That, that, that he was going to be of great benefit. Matter of fact, if the human being, this Adam that I'm creating, this Khalifa that I'm making in the earth, if he will be true to obedience to God and follow the guidance of God, he will be worthy and qualified and able to carry the weight of managing the world. Did you hear me, family? Allah says in the Quran, he has subjected everything in the skies and in the earth to serve the human being. But we can't do it without obedience. We can't do it without the guidance of God. So that is the first thing I want to say. But also, Adam is unique in the fact that he has an intellect. So yes, he, he represents the original human type, Adam does, but he also represents an intellect. Yes. This is very important. When Allah commanded them to submit, there was resistance. We know, we know the angels asked the question, and it was made clear to them why they should submit. But uh, Iblis, he just wasn't going to go along with it. He, he fought tooth and nail. My point is, Iblis' opinion was very low of Adam because when he looked at Adam, his perception of Adam is that he was inferior. The, the reports say that, they, that, that Iblis believed he was hollow, that he had no depth. I'm superior to him. You made him of mud. You made me of fire, etc. You all know the story. The point I'm making is Allah deals with this story over and over in the Quran. And each time he deals with this story in the Quran, he unravels new insights. Another place in the Quran, he talks about, wait until I breathe into him of my ruh, my spirit, then you bow. Another place he says, wait until I have duly proportioned him. Then you bow. In other words, Iblis, you're looking at the unfinished product. Stay tuned. I'm making something here. I'm making something miraculous. I'm making something wonderful here. Stay tuned. When I duly proportion him, that means I give him balance. He has the right amount of intellect, the right amount of spirituality, the right amount of him. All of that is balanced. When I breathe the ruh into him, I'm giving him that intelligence. When I breathe the ruh into him, I'm giving him that ingredient that distinguishes him from the rest of the creation. No other creature is governed by intelligence. You wrong, Imam. Squirrels act intelligently. Fish act intelligently. Moths act intelligently. What are you talking about? I'm going to say it again. No other creature is led by intelligence. The reason why they act intelligently is because Allah locked that. He clocked it. He locked it into their DNA. He locked it into their nature. It, and, and they don't go outside of their nature until we as human beings start messing with them. And even then, in the right situation, they will revert back to their original nature. You've heard that. Animals attacking you. Your pets attacking you. Snakes eating human beings. Babies, etc. You can't change the nature. So that is what governs them. That is why they act intelligently. But you and I as human beings, we act intelligently because we need our intellect. 
We have to grow in knowledge and the intellect has to be fed. The baby is not, doesn't come out naturally intelligent. That's why we watch that baby all the time. Watch what, what is the baby picking up? What is the baby putting in their mouth? Why is the baby going towards the fire? Why is the baby touching the plug outlet? These are all danger. In our knowledge, we know they're danger, but the baby doesn't know. They just go by their curiosity. I think you all get the point. We have an intelligence that distinguishes us and makes us worthy to lead and be caretakers of the rest of Allah's creation. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Now, again, so we understand this fitra pattern. So we understand this original type. Let's go to the Quran. I'm not going to read it. I'm going to say to you, the Quran gives you and I so many different aspects of how Allah created Adam. Biblical language is, 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 is close and, and, and offers some things too, but the Quran really brings it home for us. We know that Adam, alayhi salam, upon him be peace, was created, commonly we say clay. That's both biblical and Quranic. We like the term clay. Then we have also in the Quran, we have mud. Also we have in the Quran, we have sounding clay. Also we have in the Quran, we have dust. These are the descriptions of the creation of Adam. But what the insight is for you and I, because Adam is our father, we have his DNA, we have his genes, we have his potential, we have his possibilities. So what is Adam? What, what, what is this saying for us as it relates to Adam? What insight do we have into the human being by, no, by listening to these terms, clay, dust, mud, etc.? Because again, brothers and sisters, this is more talking about our internal development, our internal creation, more so than our physical creation. Even though science will bear witness that some of the same minerals and so forth that are in the earth, iron and other things, we also need as human beings, but I don't want to digress. Let me stay here. Let me stay focused on this. And here's the main point that I'm bringing home, dear family, is this. When you think about the properties and the function of these things that I just mentioned, mud, clay, dust, it, it should teach us something. We know that clay is manageable. We know that clay is impressionable. And that is so true of the human being. We're so easily influenced. We can be led off our path if we're not focused. And we use that language. We're very concerned about our babies, our young people. We don't want to expose them to certain things that might traumatize them. We don't want them to look at certain things that might affect their psyche. We don't want them to hear foul language and different things like that. Isn't that what we say? We say, watch what you're saying around that child. That You know children are very impressionable. That's the clay nature. Clay. So we have this aspect. We have this, this potential, the clay nature. So the human being is impressionable. The human being can be shaped and molded. And then when you add water to the dust or to the dirt, you get something called mud. But don't forget now, yes, you have the mud, but what makes up the mud? You've added the water. And we know that water has been taught to us to be symbolic of sensitivities. The human being is very sensitive. We know water, again, symbolically sensitive. Drop a pebble in it, it ripples. But we as human beings are sensitive also. And I don't just mean that in the negative sense. Most times when people say you too sensitive, they're being negative. You, you, you're in your feelings too much. Yes, we do have feelings. We're governed by our feelings. But sensitivity in the human being also means perception. You're able to perceive. All of us have walked into different situations and didn't like the vibe. All of us have walked in different situations and said, this don't feel right. It's time to go. Or we have been conversing or talking with someone and they may be saying one thing, but the energy they're giving off is something else. 
That's our sensitivities, our ability to discern, our ability to perceive. This is Adam, dear family. And lastly on this, as I move on, because time is moving on as well, dust. What are the characteristics of dust? What are the properties of dust? As you know, really, dust has no structure. Dust can be easily moved by wind and, and all of that. In other words, it's just dust is all over the place. And I'm not just talking about the dust that gets on your furniture. I'm talking about the idea that it has no body in a sense. It has no structure. So what is the point that I want to make here? One of the beautiful things that when, when I said that the human being is an intellect, if you pay attention to how the human being deals with complex things and discovers things and uh, forgive me, I'm, I'm, I'm having trouble with my word, but let me just give the example. The human being struggles with ideas and concepts and sciences and things in their mind. When, an inter when something is first introduced to them, they're kind of all over the place. They have no focus. It has to crystallize. It has to come together in order for us to be able to comprehend and understand what's happening. Think about your days in school. Think about when you were studying physics. Think about you were studying algebra and different things like that. You got all of these concepts and principles, but something had to happen to bring them together. And matter of fact, you can't study certain higher sciences until you have prerequisites. You have basics, a foundation, something that allows you to have the foundation to grasp the higher concepts. These are the activity. This is the dust activity that's going on in the mind as it struggles to understand, as it struggles to comprehend, as it struggles to put together scientific facts and medical facts that are concrete, that are universal, that will stand the test of time. I pray Allah that you can appreciate that analogy and understand the activities that's going on in the mind. But the other thing I'll say is remember our Imam radiallahu anhu taught us that Adam or, or at, uh, dust is also a reference to being industrious. The word dust is in industrial. Dust is in industrious, etc. And when Allah puts Adam in the garden, this is, suggests something to us. Gardens do not, are not able to just develop on their own. Gardens take care. They need care. You got to pull the weeds out. You got to put fertilizer down, perhaps. You have to make sure they get the right amount of sunlight. You have to make sure they get the right amount of water, etc. My point is, it takes work. Industry suggests work. Industry suggests you have to cultivate something. You have to develop something. You have to evolve something. And this is the nature of every human being. And by the way, when I talk about Adam representing intellect, I want to remind you that really Adam is neither male nor female. The characteristics that Adam have are human characteristics, so that includes you too, my sister. Everything that I'm talking about, just because Adam is couched in the male gender, this is not a male thing. This is a human thing. And our sisters are all part of that. Our sisters have intelligence. Our sisters are industrious. Yes. Praise be to Allah. Praise be to Allah. Ramadan as a season. What does, what does the season suggest? The term season suggests that it's just a certain period of time. Yes, seasons can be longer, they can be shorter, but the whole term and word season, what, what that is suggesting at, at any given time, it is suggesting that it's only going to be for a certain period of time. So we have, to, we, we have to understand that Ramadan is one month out of the other 11 months, or the, the total 12 months, but Ramadan is something special it's a season where we have a wonderful opportunity. It's a season that we have a wonderful opportunity to focus. 
wonderful opportunity to concentrate, wonderful opportunity to get back in line. And Allah chose that season for us. Yes. Allah chose the season for a specific period of time. And I repeat, Ramadan allows us that renewal going back. Gives us that opportunity for renewal, to hit the reset button. During Ramadan, we are more focused. We are more intentional. We are more God conscious. We're watching what we say. We're watching what we look at. We're watching what we're listening to. We're praying more. We're reading more of the Quran, alhamdulillah. All of this can help us resume and go back to that which interrupted us. But at the end of the day, we are being reconciled again with our nature. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. As I begin to conclude, family, we see this term fitra in everything that I just talked about. Allah tells us that our religion is fitra. Allah tells us, or, or what happens, I should say, when we break our fast, we break our fast. Our fast breaking in Arabic is called iftar. When we have our Eid celebration, it's called fitr. And again, you students are already ahead of me. But what I'm trying to get us to see when we're talking about renewal, when we're talking about growth, you have to think about, I hope this fitra principle can be included in what, 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 in your understanding and in your perception. Because the idea is to return. You know, I, I keep saying this, but we've all, we've had this debate for, or some people have a debate. Do we call people convert? Do we call them revert? And the idea for the convert is you leave one thing to become something else. They might like revert, revert, pardon me, because you return to who you were in the beginning. This is important because we have a, a, an initial constitution. We can see the pattern in the squirrel. We can see the pattern in the bear but we too have a pattern. So anyway, we beat that horse to death. Let me go ahead and conclude. And what I want to conclude with is that I believe that there is a connection between all three of these things. The fact that the Dean is called Fitra, the fact that we break with Iftar and we call the Eid Fitr. All of that is from Fatara. We know that means original nature, original constitution. All right. So, when we break our fast, we break it with something natural. Again, nature. So I remember Imam Muhammad was given a talk one time and he said, what is it that brings the human being the greatest joy? It, it is the human being becoming reconciled again with their nature. So brothers and sisters, please, as we go through this, we're on day 12, as we go through this and we're going through the Ramadan, let's be aware of what it should be happening in us, the internal change that's happening. Muhammad the Prophet wasallam, already told us if all you're doing is getting thirsty and all you're doing is starving yourself, but your behavior doesn't change, you're not gonna get the benefit. You might as well stop fasting because it's not just a fast from those things. You have to change your behavior. You have to strive towards that purification and reconciliation with your Lord. So if we'll do that, dear family, and we return to that nature, the successful Ramadan fast returns us to innocence and purity. We look forward to all of our sins being forgiven, whether we're doing the Tarawi Salat, whether we're staying up for Laylatul Qadr, the night of power. We're seeking this connection with our Lord. We're seeking this opportunity to be forgiven. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. We're not there yet, but we know Eid. Eid al-Fitr is the culmination of the Ramadan. 
and the culmination of the Ramadan, we say Eid is reoccurring happiness. But a little more insight, family, Eid is a happiness that can be calculated in a sense and anticipated. You look forward to it. You know it's coming. Sometimes we get we get surprised with a gift or get surprised with something. Uh, we get a bigger refund for our income tax check. That brings us some happiness too. But every year we anticipate at least two happinesses, Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha, and all of the rewards and blessings that are associated with that. So dear family, Eid is reoccurring happiness. Yes, it happens over and over again, and we anticipate it, we look forward to it. And what do the scholars teach us about the day of Eid, whether it's Fitr or Adha? The day of Eid is considered to be a remarkable achievement, whether you've completed your fast or whether you're on the day on, on, on in Mecca doing your, your pilgrimage, your Hajj. It's a day of thanksgiving. You're grateful for the blessings and the opportunity and all that has come out of that. It is a day of remembrance or reflection is a good way to say it. Going back over, you know, we ask the question, which of the two favors of your Lord will you deny? When Allah is so generous, he's so merciful, you have to reflect on this. You have to remember how much he helps us, even how much he supplies our needs, even things that we don't know about. It is also a day of harvest. Yes. What is that verse you had in your marketing for this Ramadan session? That the human being can be uh, equated or the human being is, is on the pattern of a plant. His growth pattern is on the pattern of a, of a, grant, a plant, pardon me. Well, so the day of harvest suggests that now you're going to reap the benefits of, of your care that you've given to the garden. The fertilizing, the sunlight, the watering, all of that, the care, the attention, the investment you've made in your garden. Now you have an opportunity to harvest. And boy, the harvest will be plentiful after Ramadan, inshallah. It also is a day, speaking of Eid, a day of forgiveness and a day of peace. So with that, dear family, again, I'm so appreciative, happy, and honored to be part of this wonderful lineup to keep our imams' tradition alive. Yes, we're keeping the tradition. Our imam started this tradition with us, the Ramadan session. And one of the significance of, is of it for me, significance of it for me, is I remember what Imam Muhammad said Allah did for him in the month of Ramadan. Because he would teach us all year round, but when it came to Ramadan, he said Allah always gave him something extra. Allah always gave him something profound and deep and beneficial. Brothers and sisters, we are Imam Waratuddin Muhammad radiallahu anhu. I hope y'all appreciate that. Don't put nothing in the chat. I'm not tripping. We are the Imam. And just like Allah told Muhammad the prophet, and Abashiro Mithlakum, I am a flesh and blood mortal human being just like you. What I'm saying to us is, if we situate ourselves to earn the blessings, to earn the uh, favor of Allah, we too have the same opportunities that Imam Muhammad had as far as being blessed with something extra in the month of Ramadan being blessed with something profound, being blessed with your own insights, walking away from Ramadan with your own renewal, with your own sense of, of uh, yeah, renewal is a good, a good word because this is personal. We're fasting with 2 billion people, but this is personal. And I'm not in competition with anyone but myself. I want to please my Lord. And I ask for me and for all of us that we emerge better, that we emerge and get the benefit of Ramadan and that we become reconciled again with nature. Thank you, Imam Elijah and the Houston team. Allah's peace be on all of you. Assalamu alaikum wa Ramadan Mubarak. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi